Hey, it's Joel. I'm in Spring Break Capital of the World, Orlando, Florida, and I'm here with my friend, Clayton. Hey, man. It's great to see you, Joel. Good to see you, Clayton. Clayton works at Adirondack Studios. You can do a much better job of telling everybody out there what you do, so take a moment and tell everybody who Adirondack Studios is. Absolutely. Adirondack Studios is a scenic fabricator and installer. Uh, we do very specialized custom manufacturing and uh, on-site installation services. In Orlando, we primarily work with theme parks, but as far as our company goes, we service casinos, hotels, resorts, restaurants, all sorts of things. Stand-up comedy clubs. Stand-up comedy clubs. It's just, that was, that was great when we saw that. And also, there's a good chance if you've been to Central Florida and visited any of the theme parks, they might have seen your stuff. Oh, they definitely would have seen our stuff. Clayton and his team here at Adirondack Studios is just beginning their journey into 3D printing, right? That's right. Oh, this is cool. So what I wanted to do is take a moment and have us show you where they've begun and give you a taste of what the beginnings of 3D printing right now is. Let's go! First, I want to talk about these because we were just at Give Kids the World Village and this is one of the bot hands, right? That's right. And in talking about ways to make bot hands, now me and others, you know, someone that's been 3D printing for a while, it's, it's apparent that this is a very 3D printable structure. But for you guys, how would you historically have made something like this? Historically, we would, would have made something like this uh, probably out of cast fiberglass, hmm. which would have been much more expensive. Um, <laughs> we were able to save a lot of costs, which means a lot to give kids the world. Um, but yeah, in order to do something like this out of fiberglass, we would have to create a digital file ourselves have it routed or carved by our artisans and then cast with uh, typically FR resins, which are very expensive. Yeah, they are. And by, by routed or casted, so we still have a digital workflow and you're still using a digital fabrication method, in this case, CNC milling, in order to create the, what is it called, the buck? Correct. And then, and then you create a mold and you resin cast it and then you're left with this. That's but exactly it. doing something like that, obviously with 3D printing, it, it can actually cut down costs and make things go a little bit faster. That's so what, you, what you see here is how they did it. And I'd love for you to go over this process. Sure thing. So there was an issue with this design. Um, on the actual piece itself, there is a flap that has some negative space underneath of it. So something like that creates a big challenge in actually pulling it out of the mold. So we had to do it in two pieces. Uh, first, we 3D printed the hand. Um, it wasn't what we could use in the end product because a 3D printed hand would not have been very resilient to kids playing with it or strollers right. hitting into it. Kids are tough. So what we did was we 3D printed the hand itself and then used uh, a silicone mold in order to create the final product. And this has been resin printed and it looks like it was on that AnyCubic Photon Mono uh, 6K. Correct. Photon Mono X6K. Great machine, I've used it. And these parts come out great. So when we talk about being able to print for resin casting, resin 3D printing is wonderful, right? Because mm -hmm. did, was there any post-processing on this? Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of it. Uh, we were able to get a smooth enough finish. And since it's a lot of flat surfaces, it required only a little bit of sanding. There it is, it's in the exactly. mold. Okay, so you took the print and you created the mold mm -hmm. and then you were able to make the part. Correct. In, in a resin cast, right? Right, and then we just leave it to cure. How long? Gosh, it was about a day. Okay. Um, usually it's only about a four hour kick life, but we like, we like to make sure it is thoroughly cured before yeah. we pull it out. Now this hand is missing a few phalanges. It is. And so you did the same process with the fingers, right? Correct. So each of the fingers uh, we cast in these individual molds. Uh, we weren't able to do it as one big mold just because we want to make sure it comes out in a nice quality finish without getting too many air bubbles or yeah. having any curing issues. So we did them with the uh, embedded bolts, so that way we can just slide them right in. Oh, and then you can you can epoxy glue them or wow, however, exactly. for whatever the, the correct formulation for attachment of resin casting is. Right. Um, for something like this, we would use a uh, methacrylate style structural adhesive. Okay, so then with the fingers, you just printed one finger and you printed this part of the hand and mm -hmm. then you just made it all together. So this is an actual resin cast Wonderbot hand, right? Exactly. Nailed it. Cool. Okay, let's move these to the side because we have a lot of other examples. Sure. This isn't the very first 3D printing project you've ever done, correct? correct. So the first 3D printing project we ever did is actually this fish. And it was on a different type of 3D printer. Okay. You said it was a Creality, I think, right? Yes. A Creality machine. Exactly. We were having issues with finding a fish that would work for one of our putt-putt golf clients. Um, they have a scene where it's kind of like a Zen garden and it was supposed to be a koi fish in a pond. Okay. So we were looking at all the different options we could have and 
they had normal budgets. They didn't have theme park level budgets, which are... <laughs> Not many people have theme park level budgets, exactly. Clayton. Exactly. So we had to find a cost-effective approach to give them a better quality product than what we could find online. Online, what uh. we were finding were fish that spit. So we didn't want to have a fish in the middle of a golf course with literally a hose spigot coming out of their yeah, mouth. Yeah, yeah. We needed a koi fish that was resilient too, because it's oh, literally yeah. on the putt-putt course. So it's of course gonna get hit with golf clubs. <laughs> Our solution was to go ahead and play with a purchased file from Turbo Squid because it saved that. so much of our design time, which wasn't the best use of our clients' it? money. It was a $35 file. 35 bucks, I love it. And I wanna say it came with three other styles of fish too. Oh, fantastic. So we didn't You've have to options. use- Exactly, exactly. So we created the same mold, just like the Wonderbot hands, um, and then we cast it in resin. Now, was it in these pieces? Uh, no, we joined it all together, ah, okay. so that way, and of course we went through and smoothed it. We did an application of the finishing, so that way the actual pull itself would require very little work for us to do, and then all we would have to do would be paint it. Well, I see some XTC 3D over there. I yeah, it does a great job of filling the printer lines. Yeah, absolutely. It works really well. Okay, cool. So you've got yourself a koi fish, mm -hmm. fully assembled, and you made a mold, and you did resin casts of this koi fish, and just boom, 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 boom. How was the client? Were they happy? They were thrilled. Matched the same style of fish that was uh, found in other locations, was cost effective for them, so they were able to continue investing those funds into you know, more interactive things yeah. for the guest experience. And all we had to do was uh, integrate a uh, bolt on the bottom of it, so that way we could secure it to the oh, yeah. putt-putt course. That's cool. I want to talk about that right there, though. So this is koi fish, putt-putt golf. It's so cool. Yeah. It's so cool. This one, I heard, was printed on an Ender 3. That's right. And it looks like it does, it, it had some issues. We had some issues with this one. Um, it took about four attempts to finally get one of them right. And on Ender 3, you had to do it in multiple chunks. That's right. I think it was done in about four different pieces. Okay. I know that we can't talk about who this is for. Like, you can't see this entire half of the shop because of all of the really cool stuff you're working on that you're just not allowed to talk about. That's right. And so this was for, generically, what? A cruise line. A cruise line. And for the, the cruise line that you made this for, obviously it didn't look like this. You guys sanded and painted and Absolutely. made it look really good. Then was it, was what was delivered to the cruise line, was it a 3D print or, or did you make a mold of this and cast it? It was an actual 3D print. Really? What? So this, we're gonna set aside because mm -hmm. I do see some more things right over there and I definitely wanna talk about these because this looks, it says finished skull on the cardboard. That's right. And so this is a print. It's a print. So we 3D printed a raccoon skull and then used some of our uh, specialty uh, scenic painting techniques in order to apply some fake spider webbing on it, a little bit of fake moss. Obviously it was painted uh, to be kind of like a charcoal color. It wasn't pure black. If you paint it pure black, it's gonna obviously look fake. Yeah. So having that richness of two or three different variations of gray, obviously you do a dark one first and then do a couple lighter oh. washes and yeah. dry rubs on it and that'll really give you some depth on it. Who was this for? It was for one of our team. They just wanted to do it. For they just wanted to do it. Decoration at home. It's home. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, these though, these are also 3D. Look, see, yeah. we're, we're talking about you guys just kind of starting out with your 3D printing journey, but you've done a fair amount here. Right. What happened here? So this was something that the team just wanted to play around with. Um, it <laughs> was our first loaner 3D printer that we had in the office. Okay. So it was just an opportunity to mess around with it, get used to the settings and understanding the digital interface with the printer itself. Yeah. Same thing here? Or no, that's a koi fish. Yeah. This is actually- Is that the um, same? It's the same koi fish. This is actually a part of the cast resin piece. So ah, it's okay. much denser. May I? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that is, that's, that's dense. Right. Wow. So it can withstand getting hit by a golf club. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. I love I love how much 3D printing that you've gotten into. I know you said it's the start of your journey, but I, but you've done some pretty cool and actually advanced things in doing this. And uh, actually out there. So here's where it gets really kind of interesting. If you have any tips or tricks, comments, or suggestions that Adirondack Studios could actually do with, with 3D printing, be sure to leave them down below because Clayton here is gonna be reading through them. And every one of them. Yeah, every one. Every single one, Clayton. Well, at this point, I want to wrap it up because we've gone through a lot of stuff. But before we do, I want you to look at the camera right there and tell everybody where they can find out more about Adirondack Studios. You can go to wemakeascene.com and see all of the work that we've done. Wemakeascene.com. That's right. That's a great domain. 
Well, thank you for making it this far, because if you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and fabricate all the things. And as always, high five. You want one? Please. Oh, it was a good one.